Hello students. So today we'll look at our unit number six, that is partial differential equation. Now, what exactly the partial differential equations are? An equation involving partial derivatives of an unknown function of two or more independent variable is called as partial differential equation. Now, this partial differential equation arises in the study of many branches of applied mathematics and engineering like fluid dynamics, heat transfer, boundary layer flow. To solve these equations, usually uh, we have analytical methods, but these methods are too complex in nature and cannot be programmed. That is why use of numerical methods to solve such or, uh, partial differential equation is mostly favored. So let's look at the general form of the equation, partial differential equation, which is indicated by this equation, which is here. Okay, so it is axy dabba 2 by dabba x square plus bxy dabba 2u by dabba x dabba y plus c of xy dabba 2u by dabba y square plus f of x y u dabba u by dabba x dabba u by dabba y is equal to 0. Now this represents a general form of a, a partial differential equation which has two independent variable namely x and y where u is the function. a x y b x y c of x y and f of x y u dabba u by dabba u uh, dabba u by dabba x and dabba u by dabba y these terms represents different functions now when this b square minus 4ac uh, this term okay for the given equation if b square minus 4ac is less than 0 then it is called as an elliptic equation if it is uh, equal to 0 it is called as a parabolic equation and if it is greater than 0, it is called as a hyperbolic equation. Now let's take an example of this equation. Here you can see that by comparing uh, this equation with this uh, general form, what we have is that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, c is equal to 4. That is why b square minus 4ac is 0. Hence this entire equation can be called as an elliptic equation. Uh, called as, sorry called as a parabolic equation. Let's consider a different form. That is when b square minus 4ac is less than 0, then it is called as an elliptic equation. Now elliptic equations, there are two types. When this dabba 2u by dabba x square plus dabba 2u by dabba y square is equal to 0, that is called as a Laplace equation. And when this term dabba 2u by dabba x square plus dabba 2u by dabba y square is equal to f of xy, it is called as an elliptic equation. Now, let's take an example of hyperbolic equation. dabba 2 dabba, dabba y, uh, dabba 2y by dabba x square plus 1 by c square into dabba y by dabba t square. Now, uh, here, there are two independent variables. One is space that is represented by x, okay? and another one is time that is represented by this t okay this is also called as a wave equation usually because uh, uh, this uh, these are uh, called as hyperbolic equation and uh, usually occur in the uh, phenomenon of wave analysis that is why it is called as a wave equation okay so uh, in our syllabus we are going to study uh, the solution of laplace equation the solution of elliptic equation and the solution of hyperbolic equation. Let's go to next slide. Now, what exactly uh, the uh, partial derivative really is? Okay, so uh, if you have a function u, and if you want to partially differentiate with respect to x, then its definition is limit of delta x tends to zero u of x plus delta x y minus u of x y upon delta x similarly for y that is uh, differentiation with respect to y is there now uh, these formulas are derived from the formula of central difference let's uh, consider 
the first type of equation that is Laplace equation. Leibniz method is usually used to solve these Laplace equations. Okay, uh, so the form is uh, this one. Uh, now T is the temperature, absolute temperature, and X and Y represents the uh, X and Y represent the space variables. Okay, so it is equal to zero. That is the form. Now, uh, whatever the formula we have studied in the previous slide, this one. Okay, if you square it, you can write down daba 2u by daba x square is equal to this. Okay, this is also derived from the central difference. Now, uh, this is uh, this formula is implemented over this grid. Okay, uh, now these uh, small points which you see here are called as the grid points. Now there are m and uh, m m plus one and n plus one grid points in this grid. Okay, so usually uh, this grid or this mesh is taken like uh, the mesh size in one axis is usually equal to mesh size in the another axis okay so uh, uh, let's say this on x axis it is delta x and on y axis it is delta y okay so this is going to help us uh, in further analysis okay now let us take uh, this uh, let's come to our equation daba 2 by daba t uh, daba t by daba x square uh, daba 2 uh, is equal to uh, this uh, this by central difference formula as well as we can write this by central difference formula and if you add this term okay and equate it to zero as uh, indicated by its equation then uh, as we know that grid side in both directions are same we can write uh, this okay this is our final expression now uh, how exactly uh, this expression uh, comes that you can easily simplify from this uh, uh, you can write it down and you can simplify by yourself but what is important point is that uh, what it highlights is that t at ij is equal to means at this point if you see this uh, 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 Leibniz method for solving Laplace equation uh, you will come to know uh, about uh, if you consider an individual node okay uh, this diagram will come into picture now uh, i is variable along x axis uh, j is variable along y, y axis so uh, this point node point is uh, i j okay so naturally when i increment in x direction the coordinate becomes i plus 1 j if I increment in y direction, the coordinate is i j plus 1. If I increment in negative x direction, it is i minus 1 j. And if I increment it in negative y direction, it is i j minus 1. Okay. So, what exactly this uh, Leibniz method, this formula tells us that whatever the value is there at this grid point, it is nothing but the average of these four corner points. And this is something which you should remember. Okay, so let us uh, study this uh, a practical example. Now this is called the Dirichlet conditions because uh, usually it taken that uh, on uh, let's take a plate, hot plate, and uh, usually at four corners the temperature is taken, and if this temperatures are constant. Uh, then it is called as a Dirichlet condition. Practically, it is uh, quite tough to maintain the uniform temperature around the entire surface, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, it is assumed. Okay, it has uh, nine grid points inside, as you can see from the diagram. Okay, and uh, at every point at T11, we have implemented this uh, Leibniz method and uh, we have written this equation. Okay. So for T11, uh, we have uh, at this point we know that T01 is 75 degree. Okay, then T10 is actually T10 is zero because means from this here it is uh, it is zero. Here it is 75. Pardon my writing, 75. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, at 1 1 it is nothing but the average of these four values 
okay so if you consider this node it is nothing but the average of these four corner points values okay so that is what this equation tells you okay so naturally when we write uh, nine more equations like this okay we have uh, 10 simultaneous equations uh, which we need to solve simultaneously and after solving these 10 equations we will get uh, the values of temperature at these individual points okay so uh, that problem you can uh, solve by your own but i just want to explain that how exactly it is implemented in a grid okay here also if you take uh, the grid size on in x and y direction is same okay so let us go to our example uh, in this example in this diagram you can say that this is not exactly a Dirichlet condition because you can see there the temperature is varying around the surface here it is 500 but here it is 0 okay similarly here also uh, it is a variation 2000 1000 okay so if you look at this uh, uh, if we implement lib, uh, this uh, Libman's method then what we have is that u1 that means at this point okay it is nothing but average of 1000 uh, 1, 2000 u3 and u2 okay so that gives us this equation okay then uh, we have a value of u2 how to find out value of u2 it is nothing but the average of this 1000 500 u4 and u1 similarly this u4 is nothing but average of this u2 0 0 and u3 okay similarly this u3 is nothing but average of u1 u4 500 and 2000 okay so it gives us four different equations okay uh, we have converted these four equations into this matrix form okay and when you solve these uh, four equations uh, which have which we have written in a matrix form by a gauss elimination method we will have uh, these values for the uh, respective temperatures okay so uh, you can see that this is uh, not exactly dirichlet condition but uh, this problem can be easily solved with the help of Lidman's method now second type is poisson's equation now uh, the difference between uh, simple laplace equation and poisson's equations is this def, uh, f of x y okay uh, in uh, laplace equation it is zero but in poisson's equation it is f of x y okay now uh, with the help of finite difference method formula we can write uh, this condition u of i j minus 1 u i minus 1 j plus u i j plus 1 uh, uh, u i j minus 1 uh, plus u i plus 1 j minus 4 u i j is equal to h square into f of x y okay so this is h square okay so finally uh, as we have already taken that uh, step size in both direction if it is remain same that is h okay then we can write uh, this equation okay so what is the significance of this let's study with the example okay so uh, this is what uh, this is uh, what the equation which we have got okay and uh, let us say this f of x y in this example is minus 8 x square y okay uh, now it is given initially f of x y is equal to 0 is the boundary condition okay so let us consider this grid okay the step size uh, in both the direction for this grid is same in x direction as well as in y direction it is 1 okay uh, so let us consider different grid points inside okay so you can see that uh, the, the value at this particular node 1 okay now this also is node 1 okay this is also node 1 this is also node 1 why these four values are taken identical because if you look at the uh, method by which it is being solved you can see that the uh, the temperature uh, this uh, temperature at uh, this point node point one is influenced by the same four variables which uh, already influencing others okay uh, that means uh, these four at these four points the temperature will remain same okay or it is calculated in a similar manner that is why all these four 
node points are named as a uh, node number one okay similarly uh, if you observe that few points are named as node number two okay here also uh, the temperature at this uh, node number two is calculated in the similar manner as we can find in others okay so here also uh, yeah, there is a slight difference between the uh, uh, for this uh, uh, for this uh, Poisson's equation is that uh, it simply involves uh, an additional term minus h square into f of x y i. Otherwise, it is just like similar uh, as we have studied in the Laplace equation. Okay, it is nothing but the average of the four nodal points along that uh, along the node of concentration. Okay, so this one point node uh, temperature at this node point one is influenced by these four different temperatures. Okay, so that is what is implemented at point number uh, at at point two x is equal to zero and y is equal to one. Okay everywhere you find that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1 now here uh, the origin is taken at this uh, central point 0 okay so uh, when you take origin at point 3 okay we will find that uh, all these uh, points are equidistant okay that is why we are not considering anything as a negative okay so uh, you can find out that at not uh, at uh, point 2 x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0 okay uh, so if you simplify that okay uh, uh, that is x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0 you put in this uh, function value to evaluate okay so that will uh, if you after simplification you will get this first equation okay now if you implement uh, the same Lehmann's method uh, Lehmann's formula at node point 1 you will get this another equation and at node point 3 you will get another equation c Okay, then we will write these three a b uh, these three equations simultaneous uh, simultaneous equation a b and c in matrix form as a u is equal to b. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, a uh, a matrix. This is u matrix. This is b matrix. Okay, now if you solve these three equations simultaneously, you will get u3 uh, u1 uh, is equal to 3 u2 is equal to 2 and u3 is equal to 2 so this uh, ends uh, laplace equation and poisson's equation thank you